questions that I have for you really involve which, what process you go through when you're designing a rock chalk suspension, uh, specifically for the JL, but for anything really. Just how you, what criteria you use, how you determine spring rates and bar rates and that kind of Yeah, well, some of the, that's kind of like a hit and miss thing too, because we're on our third or fourth generation of a, uh, a JL spring, because the JL has been so different than the JKs. The JKs, um, it probably took us maybe two or three tries to get a spring that we thought was really good. On the JL, we have a spring that works really good in some applications, but we in some applications for some reason it wants to lean, and and then it wasn't uh, uh, we're get, not getting the life in the spring that we want. It was using losing height more mm -hmm. than we like. So now we're the springs are actually put in your Jeep is like our our newest version um we went back and adjusted them. The, the vehicles we've been working on is rubicon and this is the first time we've actually put this spring on a sport so oh interesting okay so we'll figure it out because the spring that we had designed for a sport was working perfectly on most sports but when we put it on rubicon and make the rubicon lean a bit so now so now we've got this new spring we've been playing with we've been putting on rubicons and we've installed a few of them, and they, and you know, you know, with the full tank of gas and everything in there, and it, it, it's exactly where you want it to be. So, and that's what we're going to put in your Jeep. But I don't know why uh, we've installed our other spring on um, sports and have it work perfectly. We've been we put that spring on some of the diesel jails, work perfectly. You know, you know exactly where you want, but that. The diesel is different because the diesel, the gas tank's on the opposite side. Oh, right. And so yeah. all that stuff comes into play. And, and on our springs, the, each spring is a different height to get the thing to sit exactly how we want it to sit. So we're, we're, we're creeping up on it. I think we're, we're you know, even even the way the springs, the, the springs like in the front will want to like lean or bulge in one direction. We've been adjusting that to try to get them to stand straight up, so we've been playing with that a little bit. And we need to make one more adjustment on the spring than we have, but it's, it's really close to what we want, so. Nice. So we'll, what we'll do is we'll make some prototypes, test them, and then if we have good enough with the prototype, we'll get like a short production run, put those on some vehicles, and then <clears throat> and then once we get it dialed, then we'll go a, a full production run, so. Oh, that's a good way to do we it. We have a production spring we've been using, uh, but we're not completely satisfied with it, so we're so we're working on this new one. What you're going to get the new one because we figured you'll be a good guy to tell us what's going on. Oh, yeah. with it. So we'll be the right yeah. You'll be using it a lot, so yeah, yeah, definitely. How do the spring rates compare to, to stock, and and maybe some of the other? Well, no, they're very very similar to stock. What okay. we're using, we don't want we want to maintain that quality ride. Got it. So we're using a spring rate that's really close to what stock is. And I know that's what you did on the JK. <laughs> yeah. So the the JK had more of a progressive or a, like a dual rate. Mm -hmm. So it has start with a stock rate and then ramps up. Same same thing with the the JL. It starts with like a, a very similar rate to a stock rate and then ramps up. So on the uh, highway. 
and stuff, you're going to get a little bit softer rate. And you'll see when you look at the spring, some of the, spr the, the springs are closer together, the spacing, sure. and some are right. further apart. That's the difference between the two rates. When you space them together, that has less rate. When you spread them apart, it gives it more rate. So, uh, so where you have that rate start and how that works. So normally, you know, when you're driving it around with it empty or, or whatever, it's going to be in that softer rate. When you load it down and you put four people in it, then you're going to be probably bouncing right off the harder rate. So, and so that's you know, yeah, because it's come as closer together, start to bind. Right. So you there, the yeah, super, you know, super rate. some manufacturers say there's no such thing as a dual rate spring; they're all linear. But when the when you look at the spring and you see the coils are are further in one and then wider on the other, that's a that's, dual rate. Yeah. So how far they're you know how far apart those are or the length of them, you know that you know there is truly a dual rate right. spring. You know, or it could be progressive, so it starts out close and, and continually gets further apart. So, but uh, it's, uh, you know, you know, we work with some other engineers and stuff on it, plus the spring manufacturer, you know, trying to get the best quality of spring we get, and not only the right height right, but it stays at that height, that it doesn't lose its height. So we've been trying some different processes. Uh, a lot of springs are cold wound. Mm -hmm. um, uh, with a silicon wire, and uh, and then some springs are hot wound with a different wire, and then so we just you know you kind of experiment and get to where you want. Like our TJ and our JK springs, we're really super happy with. Uh, we've had those for a long time. We know exactly what they do. We can adjust them up and down, and and TJs and JKs, the springs are kind of interchangeable. You could use a, a JK spring on a TJ because of the same diameters. Interesting. But on the JL, it's all different. Uh, they, every spring's got isolators on the top and the bottom that, uh, you know, um, and those isolators are all angled in different directions. So, so it's been a little bit more, you know, a little more challenging than, you know. Well, I've certainly been happy with the springs on the jet. We've done a lot of work on it, trying to get it where we want. So. Yeah, it sounds like it. The nice thing about you know not using a coilover, you can get a pretty high tech shock on each corner. When you go to the coilover, then there's you know you're usually you're using you're using a coilover shock, which is probably going to be either a two inch or a two and a half inch, and then to get your bypass, you're going to have to have another shock, or you're going to have to add a bump stop to that. Right. So that you know. That adds up. The advantage to the coilover is your adjustable height. You know, makes it easy to. Uh, you could throw any spring on there and then adjust. Get your height right with the adjuster. With the, the regular spring, you're relying on the spring to give you your height and hold it level and everything. So there's advantages and disadvantages to it. So. Maybe playing with the springs. This is the first time we put that spring in a in a sport. With all the ones we've tested have been all Rubicons. Right. So we'll see what it does if it's if it for some reason because these springs one side of the spring is three quarters inch longer than the other side and you know and with the with the Rubicon it makes it it's like dead nuts. We've actually got it set up to when you have a half a tank of gas and there's a 200 pound driver sitting in it it should be perfectly level. So but if you get jump out of it it'll go up a quarter inch on one side. So. <laughs> That's how that's cool. That's how the springs are that much. They're that much different than a than a JK. We've been we keep you know trying to get it well. Well, you know, should the Jeep sit, sit level with a full tank of gas and nobody in it? Well, technically not. It should take you know it should sit level. You know, you know with you know we need to hit the mediums in there because that's how sensitive the springs were. So that's what we've been. Yeah. Doing. Wow. That's interesting. So we've been that's trying to get them dialed into what we want without just going back and. Um, we actually put some of our JK springs on a JL before, and they actually work really, really well. The problem is the ends where the spring sets are different on oh. a JK than a JL. And then we've been playing with getting everything indexed to where the spring, when it, it the springs will bow certain directions mm -hmm. that they don't bow and hit something. So we we got to make. We, I was just noticing on the JL the other day the. The right front spring is bowing forward a little bit too much. It wasn't hitting anything, but we're going to have the spring manufacturer. He can, somehow he adjusts that by the way he clocks the pigtail or oh wow 
So we keep going back and trying to get it fine tuned to where, okay, the spring's sitting straight up, it's not doing this. And if it bows, it's going in the direction where it's not going to hit anything. So <laughs> we keep playing with it. So. A lot to it. It's so not easy. Our next, uh, we, we got a JT suspension, but we haven't started on the JT springs yet. Uh, we're probably going to make our own springs for the JT. We'll probably make a three and a four inch for JT. Once we get our four inch springs figured out for the JL, which they measure about three and three quarter in the front and, and I think three and a half in the back, so it'll be sit pretty level. Your Jeep may, because you have a winch on the front, may sit a little bit lower in the front. Mm -hmm. So um, it will be interesting to see because I don't think we've done them on one with a winch in the front. So, And then if we don't like the way it sits, we've got uh, uh, spring spacers that we can use to adjust oh. it to. So if we get it done and the man is that winch is just sitting a little too low in the front. Um, we've got spacers we can put to adjust the height and stuff for the Interesting, that's cool. So yeah, uh, well Daystar makes some nice spacers and the ones that we've been using are made by Energy Suspension. Oh, sure. So it, it indexes in there and it's angled the right direction. And then you could add in half inch increments, you could keep, so you could keep adding a half inch to it at a time. It's, wow. You know, they have it for the front and the rear, so we've been, you know, so if we, we're not happy with either the how level it's sitting or if it's, you know, because you have a winch in the front. When we originally designed the spring, it was for to have a spare tire in the back and a winch in the front, and it was to sit pretty level at that. So when you put the winch in the front, it may go down a quarter of an inch in the front. So if we sure. think it's too low in the front, we can add a space okay. in the front. So. Nice. And then, yeah, just let us know on these springs because. You know, these are actually made, these are, this is a hot rolled spring, it's not a cold rolled spring. And the ones that we've had on our test vehicle, they've been holding their height really, really good. So, and we, we did that because the original ones were made out of a high nickel cold roll. And then they were losing, you know, they were losing height, but they were kind of losing it together. So the Jeep was going down like this, it wasn't going down like this or like that. It was, you know, like, well, you know, we wanted to try to maintain its height all the time, so went back and changed the process of which they make the springs. So, so we have a guy in Canada that makes our springs. He's been making oh, our wow. springs for Interesting. years. So. Interesting. Mm -hmm.